All right, so today is the day to uh, do the first round of the Australian 60s, 70s muscle car competition. And today we are on automation because we're only checking out the designs themselves. And the performance test will gonna come next round in Beam and G. So let's jump right into the submitted vehicles. We had 11 submissions. And while three of these actually use modded fixtures, I imported them without any modded fixtures whatsoever. So that what you see here is done solely by vanilla mod parts and uh, fixtures. So, one more thing before we jump right into it is the Bogen and the Play for 700 has non 60s, 70s body kits. I think those are what the numbers represent here, but again, don't quote me on that. But I'm hoping that despite those things, they will still look like, you know. Era appropriate, era appropriate cars. I still can't say anything. Okay, so this car has no issues, which is nice to see. Looks like the creator spent a bit of a fixing, uh, fixing up stuff with it. This is a pickup truck, by the way, as you know, if somebody's being blind. Um, nice little hatches there. Vertical light setup, dual exhausts. Pretty. I would say average design, it's more like a natural or vanilla design, I would say. I think these could be a bit bigger, but that's just subjective. And it also has a hood intake. Because why wouldn't the muscle car have a hood intake? Nice, interesting design. I like that how the uh, rims are also painted for the body. It's always appreciated when the color scheme is kept over all the design. Okay, let's jump into the next one. This was the Bogan Thunder. Sun, Sandra. S Sanda, watch it. Sorry, it's probably just Thunder, just a bit ghetto styled. <laughs> okay, the next one is the Firecat GT402. And this car, I think. Didn't have much shoes, but that's not what I was that's not what I was thinking about. It's that it uses the kind of a Chevy or Chevelle design. Which I always like. She the Chevy was one of the Chevy che Chevelle? I don't know. The Chevelle was probably one of my favorite all-time muscle cars. Apart from the Dodge Charger, of course. And... I am thinking that the lights here might have been the modded fixtures, because I don't see any rear lights. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those were the modded, if this was one of the modded cars, I don't actually remember which ones, uh, which ones were the modded ones. Anyway, uh, same type of hood intake, and again, a pretty appealing front, I would say. But other than that, it's a solid muscle car design. Great job, let's move on to the next one. The Hulker Vicent. Let's see what this car is all about. Doesn't have any yellow issues, which is nice. The blue ones are kind of can be ignored. Okay, so of the bet I can see that there is some issues with the overlapping of the um, what's it called, the the license plate. I think this might have been another car that had modded fixtures, so I think the cutout part might have been what used the mods. Anyway, overlooking that as a little bit of a lip spoiler bit of a went there. And yeah, I, I remember having this thought about it that I don't think you need three sets of index lights. I think this could have been just snatched off and then just, you know, leave these two. These would work perfectly. Or maybe snatch off this one if you want to keep it, uh, because you need only one on each side. And yeah, I think this is the other instance of the modded fixtures, because I'm pretty sure these checker tiles are not meant to be like that. And if yes, that's a very interesting, uh, to say the least, uh, choice for that part. And that's a uniquely set up hood intake as well. Interesting. Interesting car. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This was the Hawker Vicent. Vicent. So now it's become something uh, Italian, I guess. Monza Camozzeria Super uh, 
something, whatever. Uh, it's a Latin name, that's for sure. Okay, this has some issues, but nothing too out of the norms, I guess. It's a bit of a fat body shape. Um, hmm, interesting. It's so bulky for a car like that. Also, that's an interesting <laughs> uh, door latch or door handle. Yeah, when I opened it, I was kind of like, wait, isn't this the front? And then I realized, okay, no, those are red lights, so this must be the rear. But yeah, interesting. Also, that's, that's a really bulging out um, license plate holder there. And it's, uh, I'm assuming that should have been a turbo with some modded fixtures, but again, it wasn't really working now that I imported it without those. I like the front light uh, set up with the grill, though. It kind of reminds me of a uh, older Volvo. Recent car? Not bad. Now we go to the Taiga Super Sport. That's quite a lot of notes there. Um, hopefully it won't handle too bad on the road. Ooh, I like this rear. Even though I probably would have used only two red lights out of uh, instead of the three, but. I really like this setup with all the exhaust sticking out instead of a cutout part and it's all the detailing and this sideline. I really like how this car's design flows all over the body. Yeah, it's definitely something I, I'm gonna remember for a while. Good job on this. Okay, next one. Play Ford. This was one of the cars that used the non 70s, 60s body kit. Let's see what it's all about. Playforce 700 GT. Any two issues? Hmm, I'm not sure if the body kit is out of the era. I guess it fits. Just, just, just fits. So it's like, it's okay. Probably wouldn't use this for a 60s, 70s car, but it's not like, you know, extraordinarily out of the way. Anyway. It has some flat lights with some, opa, sorry, some glitching parts here. Um, that's probably automation being automation there. I would have probably put the emblem above the license plate, but you know, being unique sometimes can mix things up a bit. Still, that's just probably also, I probably that's true for all of the badges in, in the rear, so just put it up there. But again, that's just, you know, my opinion. Some thick wheels, that's, those are some really thick uh, wheels or, or uh, uh, tires. And that's a interesting font design. I'm not sure about these ones, but I mean, they work, I suppose. It's not like they are, you know, bad or anything. I kind of like this setup for the uh, grill and lights on the front. Yeah, pretty pretty big car, by the way. Look at how long it is. That's a long boy. Alright, let's see the next one. Clement. Clement Wombat. I think this car uses the same color scheme as the very first one. Uh, only a few issues. Ooh, I like this rear light. Those are really catchy. How are they... Oh. Yeah, I guess the further away you are, the nicer they look. It's kind of hard probably to align those seams there properly, but... It certainly did a bad job doing that. Twin exhausts. This is again a pickup car, so I think the pickup cars kind of like these color schemes. And no, I don't think this is the uh, this is a car from the same direction, same creator as the first one. I think that's solely a coincidence because I don't think I remember having two submissions from any anybody. Big bulky front as well. Kind of nice though. I like these setups with the uh, twin lights. Yeah. Solid design, what can I say? Okay, so, next one, next one is the Curvix Scorpion Sport. Oh yeah, I think I remember seeing a teaser image about this one, because this one was sent with a full package of, you know, lore and all that stuff. It has quite a few issues, sadly, but I'm hoping it won't affect the handling much. I mean, again, they are nothing of the red sort, so that's good, I guess. 
metal plated rear door rear window I'm not sure about that uh, rear window swipe I would have just left it off I mean it's too small to wipe off of anything anyway and if anything I would have put it at the bottom instead of the top but again subjectivity is playing a big part in here I like the rear and I think the front kind of keeps that design choice which is nice to see. Also pop-up lights are always a bonus point, well actually not really, but still it's nice to see some variety. And that's some really sticking out front plate. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, it, it looks decent, I like it. Reminds me a bit of an old Ferrari. Alright, let's move on to the next one. And I think the Huntsman is the next one. 195 Boss Huntsman. Quite a bit of issues actually. I think that's the biggest so far of list of issues. I'm really hoping that I won't have troubles keeping it on the road. I am not sure about the color choice. I, I don't really like two-toned uh, wheels as long as like... If one of them is a black or a, or a silver tone and the other one is a decolored one, I guess I'm okay with it, but gold going with anything else is not really my cup of tea. Also that's a really lowly placed... Um, Door handle, that's that's weird. Okay, I guess. Um, uniqueness, beauty and uniqueness. I kind of like how the badges are placed in on the rear uh, with the black uh, background. Also, I probably would have left the front uh, hood, not front hood, just just hood, not you know just just you know body shape colored. So that's a huge intake on the front, by the way. Interesting. But I, on the other hand, I kind of like the setup that it's going on on the front there. It's pretty nice with all the grills and lights and whatnot. Yeah, apart from the colors, I feel like this is a solid design. I'm gonna see if I can actually change it in Beam and G. Um, but for now, you're gonna have to vote on the card as it is, without any modifications. Okay. Cook. We have Cook Stinger XP. Let's see what this is all about. Few issues, nothing too major. You what plate? <laughs> okay, you got me laughing. That's a bonus point. Not that I'm gonna. No, it's not that I'm gonna be voting, but you know, probably you'll get uh, win over some other people as well. Um, not much to say about the rear. What exhaust? I like the shapes of it at least. I don't know about the placement of that uh, tank cab though, um, that's kind of odd. The front is pretty nice though, um, it reminds me of probably the dodges um, that you was played there and the see-through part on the front, there is no grill, just, just a hole there. I mean interesting, I guess, I like the wheels though, I think these are probably my favorite uh, muscle car rims, especially that you can two-tone color them. That's a kind of huge or, or tall cabin there. Interesting. And kind of small wheels compared to the body, I think. Maybe it's just illusion for me. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, which one was this? The uh, Cook, so now we are coming with the Brinkwood, which is I think our last model. Surfer Boy. I'm assuming that's because it's gonna be like a, a sedan type of... Not sedan, sorry, what's the other part? I'm not sure, I'm not good with names. Automation is kind of patching up the issues there. Okay, now it's gone. Now that it's loaded, I can actually evaluate the car as it is. Interesting rear lights. I kind of dig those. I haven't seen any of those used that used yet. Fap all year is the <laughs> license plate, interesting. Uh, twin antenna on the top. Is, do you say antenna as like the plural? I think you are. Sunroof, that's also something I haven't seen on the other cars, if I remember correctly. I like how the creator used some vinyls or decals to make the car more interesting. It fits the whole Surfer Boy theme with this uh, roof rack and whatnot. I like the intake on the hood. And also the front is, is always... I'm kind of... this is my weakness, so if, if there is like twin frames, so you know, one frame for the overall front light and uh, grill setup, and then one just for the grill, that's kind of is a plus point or a bonus point in my book. 
so there's some weirdness going on with the lights there. Why is there an orange part there? I don't know if that's intended, but whatever. New South Wales. Wales. And this sums up all of our cars. So please comment with uh, which one was your favorite car. You can only comment on one. And hopefully we'll have a winner for the first round based on design choices. And then we'll see which one performs the best on the track. So thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one. Goodbye.